I was born in a town called Cheltenham in the west of England. From a young age, I always wanted to be an Olympian. I was a pretty good skier, but then I was introduced to ski jumping. I'm the man, I got the plan. The fans are going crazy for Eddie. With no money, no equipment and very little experience, I set off to qualify for the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. The rest is history really. I was the first British competitor to represent Great Britain in the Olympic ski jumping. I held the British ski jumping record for more than a decade. My story isn't a fairy tale story about winning against all odds. It's a story about ambition, overcoming adversity and giving everything you've got to follow a dream. It's a story about never giving up. My name is Michael Edwards, but most people know me as Eddie the Eagle. Good morning, Eddie. Good morning. Great to meet you. We better do an elbow bump. <laughs> Hi, Eddie. Morning. Yeah. Nice to see you. We're going to have some fun today. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Love your masks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the world we're living in at the, at the, at the moment. Um, we are all socially distanced. I couldn't ski jump this far, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, should we get rid of these? Let's take this off, yeah. Oh, oh no, put them back on. Put them back on. So, Eddie, <laughs> everyone in the UK, Great Britain, knows Eddie the Eagle. But when I talk to colleagues in Europe, they all know Eddie the Eagle as well. So, why, why do so many people know about you and your story? Well, I was the best looking ski jumper in the world. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I think the name's very popular. It's very easy to remember. And obviously what happened at Calgary captured everybody's imagination. And of course the film as well. Uh, so I'm amazed that 32 years later, people still remember the name Eddie the Eagle and quite fondly and it's lovely. We're trying to spice it up a little bit and do something a little bit different. <laughs> We've been searching on the internet to find some, some photos of, of you. And we'd just like you to, to explain what happened and what led to the photos. So we can start off with this one. And I noticed you're wearing Canadian gloves. Ah, yes. I've still got that torch, that Olympic torch. Um, I was very kindly asked by the Canadian Olympic Association or authority uh, to be a torch bearer for the Vancouver Olympics. And it was a lovely honour. And it was about eight o'clock in the morning. It was about minus 30 degrees, freezing cold. And then I, um, I sort of received the torch. Uh, it was all lit. And then I, I ran for about 200 metres and then handed it to the next person. Uh, but I've still got the track suit and all the gear and the torch and stuff at home. So yeah, so that was Vancouver torch bearing. We couldn't do this interview without showing you this picture. Um, what on earth are you wearing here? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very fetching number. Oh my God, I was so embarrassed. Um, that was Splash, um, a, a TV show about springboard diving. And uh, they approached me to ask me whether I would like to take part in it. And um, I, I agreed. I thought it'd be great, a challenge to learn to dive. But the costume uh, people, in their wisdom, uh, dressed me up like um, Big Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Big Daddy costume, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was the first round of Splash. Uh, and I had to wear that ridiculous um, costume. Brilliant, brilliant. Eddie, you're a good looking chap. Who are the two ugly people in this photo? Oh dear, I, I know, I really didn't want to be photographed with them. I thought, I, I, you know, me being so, as good looking as I am, but uh, Hugh Jackman and Taron Egerton, that was one of the premieres. But, this is your, um, of your film? Of my film, yes. yes. Not many people realise, but I signed the deal to make that film 20 years ago. And in the end, I said, give me a call when you actually start making the film. And after 10 years, I thought, well, the film will never be made. But it was because of Splash and winning that first series of Splash, that was the impetus then to make the film. And of course, I, I travelled around the world um, to about 15 different premieres. Here's one of you sitting down on the job. <gasps> so tell me about that little episode. Oh, my God, yes. That was filmed near Salzburg for um, Red Bull. And they wanted to kind of take the mickey type of thing because all their all their interviews are all sort of deadpan, very serious, and they talk about their life and all their winnings and trophies and things. But of course, they couldn't do that with me because I came 58th at Calgary. <laughs> so we did a bit of a, um, a kind of a, a take the mickey type thing. And they wanted me to pretend to go for the world ski jump record 
on a toboggan. Um, and I went, I think, 12 metres flying through the air on the toboggan. So, uh, yeah, that was the world record ski jumping on a toboggan. <laughs> well, so you did have a world record after all. <laughs> I did get a world, I'm a world record holder. <laughs> you were not only known for, for your sporting exploits, but also you had a very distinctive look about yourself at the time. If I remember, you had a, uh, um, a little moustache. Yes. And you had some, some serious glasses oh, on. Oh, probably thick. Spectacles on. Yes. And, uh, I mean, that obviously led to this particular photograph. <laughs> yes. That was the early 1990s. And that was a Specsavers commercial. And um, one of the agents um, that I, I, was, I, I had approached Specsavers and suggested me for an advert. And they loved the idea. And this was Specsavers very first national commercial. And it was brilliant. Uh, I had such great time. Okay, Eddie, we've, um, we've learned today what a celebrity you are, but it, I think it's useful now and interesting for our viewers to really drill in and learn a little bit about your sporting background and performance. Yes, I, I've been skiing a lot more than I've been ski jumping, actually. I started skiing um, at school on a school ski trip and I learned at 13. Okay, I was very lucky. I lived very close to a dry ski slope. Um, had a lesson there, went to Andalo in the Italian Dolomites for my first ski trip, loved it, came back and that dry ski slope, the local one, became my home. I was up there every night after school or weekend or school holidays, started racing, alpine ski racing, slalom, giant slalom, raced internationally and then went to America to race, ran out of money and I, I tried to find something cheaper to do and ski jumping was cheaper. So I started ski jumping. It was just economical, really. It was much cheaper for me to ski jump than... Uh, and a bit more dangerous as well. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, it was, it was exciting. It was exciting. And I, um, I, I knocked on the door at the ski jump and they, they said, there's a lost property shed at the bottom. Go and find out what fits and have a go. And, and off I went. But I did it very, very quickly. It normally takes five, six, seven years. And I went from a beginner to the 90 meter in about five months. And, um, wow. and that was it, whoosh, and off I went. And then managed to qualify for Calgary and then went to the Olympics and became Eddie the Eagle. And that's my kind of story in a nutshell, really. Yeah. And I came 58th out of 59. A lot of people don't <laughs> realize this, but at Calgary, a Frenchman fell and broke his leg in the training. So I'm taking that as a, you know, a 58th out of 59. I didn't come last. <laughs> Quite right. <laughs> Not a lot of people know that. Not Eddie. a lot of people know that, <laughs> yeah. no. Your life must have changed tremendously after that. Yes, yes. It, it, my, my feet really didn't touch the ground for about three years after Calgary. I was flying all over the world. I was opening shopping centres, golf courses, hotels. And of course, at Calgary, straight after Calgary, I got banned from the Olympic team because the British Olympic Association said that I was making a mock of the sport and bringing the sport into disrepute. So I got kicked off the team. I wanted to have Calgary as my first Olympics. I wanted to get a little bit of attention from the UK press and then hopefully turn that attention into sponsorship and then make it easier for me to go for the 92, 94, 98, 2002 and 2006 Olympics. And then over the next 20 years, I could have got better and better and better at ski jumping. That's what I wanted to do. Then I got banned because I became Eddie the Eagle. So the only thing left open to me was PR. And um, I tra traveled the world for three or four years, earning about 10 grand an hour to open all these, you know, fun rides and hotels and golf courses and stuff, having a whale of a time. You got a law degree. Yes, yes, I got a law degree. But, but goals was, was always something that I had because I had daily goals, I had weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals, and of course, the big goal was the Olympics. But I had lots of, you know, individual small little goals and I kept having to achieve those. Can you just talk us through what drove you on? I just had such a passion, I still do, for skiing. But I was also very highly self-motivated. Whenever I did something, I wanted to be the best at it. So when I started skiing, that was it. You know, I wanted to get into the England team, the British team, I wanted to go to the Olympics, and I wanted to be the champion, the best. So Eddie, not many people have the opportunity to see their life story played out on the big screen. So tell me, what was it like for you watching Eddie the Eagle, the film? <sighs> We were blown away by it. We came out, we were all crying. Oh my God, this is such a good film. And I still love it to this day. It really captured the heart and spirit and essence of my story. And they did it in such a lovely way. They captured it very well. They, they captured it so, so well. And, and to have Hugh Jackman and Taron play, play me and, and all that kind of thing, they did such a great job. I loved it. I mean, it shows some tremendous hardship. I think there's one scene 
where it looks like you're sleeping in, in, a, in a cupboard or, or a bar yes. and, and really roughing it. Was that, was that, is that based on truth? Um, they, they, they've used a certain amount of artistic license, but not very much. I, I think personally, I think the film is about 85, 90% true, but it only represents about 20% of my life as a ski jumper. In fact, I think my life was a lot worse, really, than the film portrayed. Uh, I slept in many basements. Um, when I drove my camper van, I parked in the basement of apartment blocks because it was warmer uh, and uh, away from the elements. Um, so yeah, I did a lot of that. So Eddie, the, um, the film shows you uh, being told as a child that you may not walk again. Mm -hmm. So was that made up for the film or was that, uh, mm -hmm. did that actually happen in real life? No, it, it kind of happened. It was just, when I was nine and ten, I had a really bad infection in my cartilages, or in my cartilage in my knee. And I was constantly, for two and a half years, in and out of hospital and in and out of plaster. And they used to put me in a plaster cast from my ankle to my thigh. So I was literally in and out of plaster for two and a half years. Couldn't run, couldn't walk, couldn't do sport, couldn't do anything. But in the film, if they'd have put me in a plaster cast, it could have implied that I'd simply broken my leg when it was much more serious than that. So in the film, one of the opening scenes, as a little boy, I'm coming down the stairs in calipers. Now, I didn't wear calipers, but that was just to represent or to symbolize the fact that I was out of action for two and a half years. Right. And then two, three years later, um, I went skiing. And of course, my mum and dad were a little bit nervous because I had these problems with my knee. And they thought, oh, do you really want to go skiing? But I've always wanted to have a go because I used to love watching Ski Sunday. Eddie, we've heard about the highlights from your career, but building a business needs courage, hard work, tenacity, and you needed the same qualities early on in your career. Can you just talk us through how you handled those challenges? Yeah, as, a, as an athlete, I think there's a lot of qualities being an athlete and competing and trying to achieve goals, uh, the same as in business. Um, I think the biggest tool in my tool bag was resilience. And no matter how many people told me that it couldn't be done, it's impossible, give it up. Everybody I told when I started skiing, I'm gonna to go to Olympics, they just laughed. But then I managed to get there and through bags and bags of tenacity and never giving up and bags and bags of resilience, despite everybody telling me that it can't be done, I still achieved it against all the odds. And um, so yeah, it's very, very similar to building a business. Never give up. I was prepared to do anything. And if that meant, you know, scraping food out of the bin because I didn't know where my next meal was coming from, um, I was prepared to do it because I was doing something that I love to do. What's life for Eddie the Eagle today? Um, well, it's been very good. Obviously the film helped enormously. For the last four years, I've been traveling all over the world, doing talks, uh, talking at conferences and dinners and lunches. I, I've been doing on average between eight and 10 speeches a week. But then COVID happened, the, the pandemic, and the work just suddenly stopped. But I went back to my old job as a builder and plasterer. So I've been renovating a house. So I've been very busy and I've got permission to build two new houses. So I'll start those as well until things start to get back to normal. And then I can go back to doing the TV shows, the speaking and, and all that kind of thing, which I do love. So Eddie, are there certain things you can apply to whatever task you have in hand, whether it's plastering or ski jumping? And what is your particular approach to whatever task you're faced with or challenge? Something I did naturally, which was very important, is visualisation. Um, and I think that's as important in business as well. You've got to visualise yourself with your company being as big as you want it to be. And by visualizing that, it helps you to achieve those goals. It was very, very important for ski jumping because my nearest ski jump was a thousand miles away. But if I sit in a room and just visualize and imagine myself seeing and feeling everything that I would see and feel as I'm flying through the air, so long as I go through that process, it's like I've never been away. And I think you can use that in anything, whether it's in sports, in business, uh, or in life. You've got to visualize it to be it. Yeah, that's a great point. Olympian. British record holder. Lawyer. Plasterer. Stuntman. Pop star. Speed skier. Legend. Legend. Eddie, thank you very much.